Hello and welcome to Fake News Show, ladies and gentlemen. You know what we do on this show? We discuss all about misinformation and disinformation. How does misinformation wound you? How does it wound me? How does it affect us as a nation, as a people, as a as a community? How can you identify false information from no matter whatever source is coming from? How can you avoid it? How can you report it? How can you prepare yourself against malicious attack and information everywhere from conventional uh, media to the internet to everywhere? That's what we talk about on fake news. Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. Are come? All right, guys. It's still fake news show, and I'm your host, Frank Donga. Every time things happen in a country. You always ask yourself, what are the governments doing? What are the leadership all about? You know, everybody is trying to look for who to blame. When in Nigeria, uh, the time of uh, collecting PVCs, we were asking, what time are we supposed to do it? When are we supposed to go? What are... Everything keeps coming around to who is responsible for information dissemination. Yes, we have a Ministry of Information. We have a Minister of Information. We also have other agencies that are responsible for informing, for carrying the country along. There's one particular agency that is amidst other things, is responsible for fostering uh, unity amongst Nigerians and encouraging patriotism. It's supposed to guide Nigerians towards a common goal in terms of values. That agency is called the National Orientation Agency. Who did they orientate? Did they orientate me and you? Where did they happen gone? Where are they? Where is NOA? Where is NOA? Everybody is asking. What's the role of the NOA in all this misinformation and dissemination? Today, we're going to discuss the role of the National Orientation Agency in countering disinformation in this country. What's their role? What are they doing? What exactly are they doing? What are they about? Let's know. Take a short break and when we come back, we'll continue. But before then, no, we'll go on the streets to go hear with people they talk. On the street, to wait till people they talk. You say, hear the conversation where they happen for street. Now make no be like saying I'm a talker. People are talking on the street. Yeah, hear them. Hear them after we'll come back. See. comes as a kind of a lie against a personality. So it may destroy a personality if uh, it's being carried out in that kind of manner. You know, when, when, when you just bring out information for the purpose of uh, destroying the personality, it has a personality effect on the character and content of a, a, an individual. You verify information before, before you act on it not jumping on anything you see on the social media. Any information you get, you have to verify it. We have various means of verifying information before you act on it. Every person is a fundamental human right for you to air your views. But while you are airing your views, do not encroach on the rights of other people. Don't say something about them that is not true. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here I am so. You hear and so that's what people are saying on the streets. Everybody wants to know. Everybody has an opinion. But amidst all of this, questions are asked. Answers have to be provided. And that is why we have a special guest in the building today. In the person of the Director General for the National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari himself. Yes, he's our guest today. I made the question now. I go, I go question now. Where has NOA been? National ID card, when do we collect it? PVC for election, what is happening? At least they're supposed to give us information now. Any information that escaped Ministry of Information. And who is supposed to get her from? National Orientation Agency is here to answer the questions. Let's go as we talk to Dr. Garba Abari, the Director General for National Orientation Agency. Welcome back, guys. You know, we did a good one for this show. Fake news show. And this segment is Let's Talk. And what are we talking about? Who are we talking to? Now, now you go find out. <laughs> On this segment, we have somebody very special, like I said earlier. He is the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. <laughs> you see, Anso. <laughs> you see, Anso. No other person but Dr. Garba Abari. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning. You're looking very wonderful, sir, in this water time. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Eli said, give me your tailor number later. <laughs> So, sir, you are the DG of uh, NOA, for short. We'll be calling it NOA. Uh, people keep asking different questions about NOA, you know, 
I'm going to go there. But uh, first of all, out of all the missions of the NOA, which one is the most important for your establishment, for the National Orientation Agency? What's your most critical task? Thank you very much. Our first and most important critical task is the propagation of government policies, programs, and the activities to the citizens. Hmm. When you do that, we bring back to citizens, to government, through special reports, through pulse of the nation report, the reaction of citizens on certain government policies and programs. The idea is to engender a two-way traffic between citizens and government on policy objectives, on policy focus, on policy direction. Good. Now, beyond that, citizens do react hmm. to some of the policies. Now, the reaction is what we get mainly from our uh, polling in local communities, in marketplaces, hmm. in motor parks, hmm. and we aggregate all this and send to government by way of either special reports or what we call pulse of the nation. Very good, sir. Both. And this is a pulse of the nation report. And it gets to the president, to the vice president, to the senate president, to the speaker, in fact, to all the relevant... Uh, and then if a policy, for example, touches on housing, hmm. we copy the report to the minister for housing and the relevant agency, which is the mortgage bank. If it is something financial or monetary, we copy the Minister of Information, I mean the Minister of Finance, and we also copy the Central Bank. So, so the, 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 the reports actually are drawn in such a way that the policy is going to be articulated, set. Hmm. These reports, are they available to the public? They are actually made not available to the public, but they are, hmm. because it's come from the public. It's a report that is generated from public reaction. For example, we have a report, you know, on the recent increase in petroleum products, uh, the price in petroleum products. Mm -hmm. We have a report <coughs> on the increase in uh, the cost of electricity. We have a report on uh, the, 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 the high incidences of food prices. But if they are from the public, then they should be available to the public to view on your website or publications uh, that we can... It's on our website. If you go to the All website, the reports are available on your website. Yeah. Ah, good. Because uh, when you said it, I was thinking, because it's like going to the lab to do blood tests. <laughs> you have to, I have to get access to my results now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now, um, how has uh, fake news affected your work or misinformation or disinformation? How has it affected your efforts or your work, your constitutional responsibilities so far? In so many ways. Give us one or two of those. First and foremost is the fact that um, as a citizen's engagement agency, whatever it is that comes out of the NOA, for example, must have to be checked. The citizens must be fed with information that is correct, that is verifiable, you know, and, um, and, um, and, uh, and that addresses, actually, the issues that it really sets out to address. Hmm. Now, a typical example is when we were in the community sensitization stage of COVID-19, when the transmission had started at the community level. And then all of a sudden, there was this video that was going, making the rounds purportedly from the World Health Organization, purportedly from the World Health Organization, saying uh, uh, face masking cannot prevent you from contracting COVID-19. Social distancing will not uh, stop you from contracting COVID-19. 
Even washing of hands with soap and water or sanitizer would not. Now, if this is coming from an agency like the World Health Organization, then, then, then why, why, why the lockdown, for example? Mm -hmm. Why the lockdown? Why all the worry? Why, how, why, why is the entire world locked down for almost six weeks? So that increase your work. You have to so, go into action. So, 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 so we, we, we had to go actually with the, with, uh, the right with also uh, 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 trying to counter this information. Trying to counter this information. Secondly, is the issue of uh, another issue of fake news that COVID-19 doesn't actually attack Africans. Mm. Or we Africans have a particular, we have a particular uh, 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 physical characteristics that naturally repel COVID-19 uh, afflictions. So we can as, as well go about doing our normal businesses because COVID-19 is a problem of only Europe, and in the Americas. And you repeated that? Also. So it has to be countered. Okay. And uh, how, do, how do we do that? Through radio jingles, through television appearances, through a very massive, if you see my handset, you see the kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, 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 videos that we had to send, you know, uh, uh, jingles that we have to send in different languages, in Hausa, in English, in Yoruba, in Igbo, in Fulfulde, in Kanuri, you know, mm. and asking our community mobilization officers in the local governments using their handheld speakers to also uh, counter this wrong information. This is another second example. I'm happy you said there. feeding the uh, communities with, of citizens with the right information. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a second half. We are coming back. We we'll take a short break. When we return, we keep our conversation with the Director General of National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari. Don't go anywhere. Second half, go tough. One, two, three. Now I can send this story to my brother. He must share it with my mother. What are you sending to your aged mother? Come and read. I found these stories on the internet. Wait, did you verify these stories to be sure they are facts? Verify? Why? Have you not heard that it is important for you to always verify stories by doing these five before sharing them? Five things? That's too much for just one story. First, check the headline if it's sensational. Check the news sites that published it to ensure it's credible. You double check to make sure the same piece has been published by other credible media organizations. Oh, really? Yes, check the dates the story was published and finally seek experts' opinion and possibly advice on the report. Wow, I'll quickly verify these by checking the headline, date, source and seek experts' opinion before I forward them to my brother and mother. This message is brought to you by the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD. You should only share information from credible sources. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fake News Show. I'm Frank Donga, and we've been talking on this segment of Let's Talk to a very important personality, National Orientation Agency. Oh, yeah, question. Where is anyway? Where is anyway? This one, the Apple. Where's, they are here. Oh. Director General Garba Abari. Dr. Garba Abari is in the studio with us. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you very much. What's your relationship with the government agencies, uh, Ministry of Information, for example, you know, how do you ensure that, you know, government or leadership too is held accountable to give accurate information to the public? The, the relationship between the National Orientation Agency and the, the Ministry of Information is a very cordial, complimentary relationship. Mm. And we get a lot of support. Oh, from that's good. Because you get that. But mm. there is a very big problem that, that's the, and, and I want to bring this to the public domain. Mm. You know, the, the issue of um, what has actually developed over the years, and I call the typical civil service mentality mm. of actually operating with a lot of shrouded secrecy you know, when it comes to giving information to the public in respect of what directly affects them. No, I'm happy you said shared secrecy. I'm happy you agree that there's some secrecy going that, on. That, there. that is definitely. Yeah. Now, only yesterday, mm -hmm. only yesterday, I had to convene a, a stakeholder meeting hmm. on the use of the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, I saw that. So, for ex beyond, for example, beyond asking for financial 
or procurement rules. There are so many things that citizens are supposed to. Most of the questions you are asking me are already on my own side. Nice. You like, for example, if you go, you will get to my 2018 uh, auditor account. I ask, uh, the, they will ask, how much have you, be, have you received? How much have you expended? My budget is on the website. I all, whatever I am able to receive, I get, I, 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 I put it on the, on the website. But the issue is, the, there is a Freedom of Information Act yes. that equips citizens mm -hmm. with a very potent tool to ask for questions, mm -hmm. to, inter, to interrogate government uh, policies, programs, and activities, which citizens don't, don't do. They are only concerned mainly about the financial aspect, mm -hmm. you know, living substantially, you know, even the most fundamental aspect, which is the philosophical uh, 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 basis of a policy. Sometimes you know, that sociological. Easy. You know, you know doctor, that's one. Secondly, mm -hmm. then there is what they call this, what is called the official secret act. Mm. Those official, I, official <laughs> the, secret act. Yes, you know that one. <laughs> this one is an act. Or, you know, is a, is a law that forbids you. You know, for granting certain information mm. to non-authorized persons, so you get a kind of like a, you, you you find of a, a kind of a conflictual, uh, mm. uh, you know, jump between, mm. you know, a freedom of information act mm -hmm. that gives the citizens the power to ask questions, you know, within the limits you know, yes. uh, encapsulated in the act. And then there is, on the other hand, a, 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 an official secret. That you have to keep. Uh, that well, those should be stated so, so, so. in black and white. If it stays secret, if it has to do with security, if it, there should be clear... That's that is part of why it. the National Orientation Agency has been... And this is about the fourth in, in engagement I have had on the officials, on the Freedom of Information Act. This is the fourth engagement. Unfortunately, and, then, and this is one of the biggest issues that I have come to discover, that maybe because our, our reading culture is dying, you engage, you, 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 you ask if you have a group of 10, 20, 30 people who are always talking about their rights to know and their rights to, to get information and to inquire whether media or civil society and then you ask, did you read the law? Yes. I, no, no the, uh, well, but I have not read it, but then, if you don't, if you have not read the law, and you don't, you, and you do not even know its potency, and you do not even know how to utilize it, then you just can be amplifying all your rights to say As you true as that may be, sometimes, I also have to acknowledge the fact that sometimes journalists and citizens generally try to get information. Sometimes we get conflicting or contrary. I mean, I'm happy you have a good relationship with the Minister of Information. There was a time when this social media bill issue was a thing and people went back and forth. They said the minister said there was no bill. You know, there was an interview on video where he said there's no bill. Then later we had there was a bill. You know, these are some of the things that people, you know, Maybe that's what they are referring to, you know. Uh, those are the kind of things. And, but anyway, that's not. Um, uh, it's good that you have a cordial relationship with them, and hopefully, you know, you are able to get accurate information, you know, to to let the public know that. By law, mm. the National Orientation Agency can generate its own information without even necessarily referring to the ministry. But you can confirm something like that. Well, definitely, like we can confirm because we remember. We you like can I said, like, like, that, like I have you know, told you, you the minister for no information, information and is the so chief spokesperson of the government. Okay. So if you want. If we want to re to 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 to, to cross check mm. and reinforce our firmness of belief mm. in a particular information, we of course run to him. Do you have any powers to scold or to apprehend? Not apprehend. They are not the police. Yeah. But, but to to inform or to set right a record of information that was wrongly put out by any agency or any government official. Of course, when we get access to it, we do. Mm. Yeah. So we if can. a minister or a commissioner somewhere says something that is not totally true. Not a commissioner because I have no, I okay. have no, yes. I, 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 yeah. I, I have no, I, I have no. So you can send no the record straight. But can people send requests to you to confirm information if they are finding difficult? Definitely, to get? Okay. definitely, and that is why uh, you go to our uh, the, the board, mm. the board, the what do you call it? the the one that shows this is the, the direction of the national orientation agency. You see all our social media handle addresses.
Talking about social media handle, how do you engage with the youth? Because I know uh, the National Orientation Agency, you know, it's a, it's a federal government establishment. Uh, you know, we keep talking about youth peddling fake ru information or rumors. A lot of these youth are on social media. Ch times are changing. You know, we have our senior citizens mostly in parastatals and government agencies. What's your plan to use technology to meet this use at their point? The world is changing. This is 2020. Obama has a Twitter handle. Trump has a Twitter handle. I have a Twitter handle. You have a Twitter handle. The end, give, me, give me your Twitter, Twitter handle. Give me your Twitter handle. <laughs> now today, that will follow you. They will follow me. We'll follow, we'll, so that we we'll follow them. That's we'll follow at Gerba Abari. That's at Gerba Abari. Abari. Yes. G A R B A A B A B A R I A R I at Gerba Abari. I am following you night now. Somebody get me my phone. I will follow you. Everything you tweet now, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you, say second half go tough. You know, say I said they sweat. Even you said don't they sweat for us. We've been talking to the director general of the National Orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari, and he's uh, been wonderful on this show. Not go anywhere because the segment we can't follow this one after this break. You can't tough pass. So stay with us. This is fake news show. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We just had a conversation with uh, Dr. Garba Abari of National Orientation Agency. He has promised to come back because we're not finished waiting one talk. We're not time. The way time they run for this show, eh? Once we do, eh? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Fake News Show. Before I know it's happening, now, time don't finish. We have to bring him back. National Orientation Agency is coming back. The orientation they need to give us, they must give us. We are bringing them back. Any question, where you want me to ask them, tweet at me at Frankdonga underscore. Tweet at, at CDD West Africa. Send us a message. Where he's coming back next episode. National Orientation, orientation Agency, Dr. Garba Abari. He is going to answer the same question. You know, yeah, we, we, we ask, we ask, ask him, ask him the question. So he's not going anywhere. But now, eh, CDD West Africa don't go bust some fake news, misinformation. They don't package them. You know, we hear here with the bust now. You say go see what did happen. See for yourself. We'll come back. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake News Alert. Is President Buhari the most followed African leader on Twitter? The claim that President Buhari is the most followed leader in Africa on Twitter is false. CDD Fact Checkers can confirm that Egyptian president at CC official is the most African leader on Twitter with 4,133,263 followers as at the 10th of July 23rd, 2020. And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you, you're yeah, welcome back. CD West Africa have told you. That's what they have told you. So we should ask ourselves, before we just pay that information, before we rush with the information, before we transfer it, forward it on your app, ask yourself, before you call somebody and say, ah, oh boy, you be like, say they talk, say, is the information correct? You have a right as a citizen, as a human being, because cheese the sweet now, because not be your own. By the time they carry your cheese, it's a pain, no, it's a pepper. Verify. Don't be a rumor monger. Verify. Don't be a busybody. Verify. Don't be a fake news peddler. Whether you're in government or you're a citizen, we are talking to everybody on this show. Everybody. Even me. Even you, where they watch me, you concern all of us. Are you responsible with the information in your hand? Join the conversation. Hashtag stop fake news. Hashtag fake news show. Tweet at us at CDD West Africa. And let's get this conversation rolling. Be responsive with information in your hand. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Without you, there's no us. We thank you from CDD West Africa. Frank Donga signing out saying thank you for joining us on Fake News Show. Join us again next week. Same time, same station. Do your best to be a responsible somebody. See ya.
Truth Show is an initiative of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.